Laravel Cloud has been out and we've heard lots of your feedback. And one of the big pieces of feedback that we've gotten is questions about billing. So here I am with five tools in this video that we have to estimate your bill so that you can be sure that you're not gonna be blindsided by a bill. There's a lot of questions like, what happens if I have an app running 24 seven? What happens if I add hibernation? How much does my database really cost? We've got five tools for you in this video to help you out and figure out exactly what Laravel Cloud hosting will cost for you. The first tool that we have is our brand new ship this week pricing calculator. So for Laravel Cloud, there are a lot of different options that you can add on. You have app clusters, app compute, worker clusters, databases, cache, object storage, and we have hibernation. There's a lot of moving parts. So the calculator is here to help you understand what might happen if you have certain pieces of resources on and running or not on and running. Let me zoom in here and we'll go through our quick start presets. We have personal sites around $8 per month, small business, an e-commerce site. And these presets are really good at helping us understand what could happen in a scenario like a personal site. We're looking at around the $8.62. Let's see if we can look at our compute usage and see if we can change things around. You can see compute here is $1.28 and our database is $7.34, which is the majority of that cost. Let's scroll down here. We have our sandbox or production plan. Let's go for the sandbox at $0 a month base. We have our app cluster. We can choose between flex and pro CPUs. Flex are lightweight, a little bit cheaper than the pro CPUs and they support hibernation. These are great for your applications. They're able to burst up when traffic comes through and your app needs it. The pro CPUs are more attuned to higher sustained long-term heavy workloads. They don't support hibernation. So I'll keep flex here. One flex at the 512 right there. I'll keep that $1.28 for the month because we have hibernation on. And we're saying our app will be hibernating for 80% of the month. Now this is saying, hey, of four weeks out of the month, our app is probably going to be up for only one of them. And that could be like one hour a day here, one hour a day there. When our app hibernates, it goes to sleep and does not incur any costs. And when it receives traffic, it'll spin back up and start serving traffic. And you can configure how soon your app hibernates. You can say five minutes, 10 minutes. I think this app might get a little bit more than 20% usage. So let me bring this down to about 50%. It'll be on for half of the month. And you see my compute went up to $3.21 subtotal up to about estimated 10.55. For a personal site, I don't need worker clusters. These are going to be used if you want to run queue workers on the side and not on your main app cluster, which is what serves your web traffic. I'll keep it like that. Under resources, we already have a database selected for serverless Postgres, and we have it hibernating at 80% of the month, and that's where we get our $7 and 34 cents. So if we wanted to say our app will have only hibernate for 30% of the time, our database, then you can see our bill for that would be $21.94. And the cool thing about serverless Postgres is that you can hibernate a little bit faster than your app cluster. You could even say, oh, hibernate after 10 seconds of not receiving a query. The great thing about serverless Postgres is that it will spin back up within a couple hundred milliseconds so that it serves traffic. So since it has such a fast boot up time, it's safer to say, I'll make this hibernate a little bit more. Let me bring that up to even like 85%. So we're paying $6 a month for that database. You could increase the CPU for your database if you needed it to be a little bit stronger and more robust and faster, but serverless Postgres also has auto scaling so it can scale down to 0.25 CPU and we can even say scale up to one CPU when the load requires it. Right now, I'll keep it like that. Storage, one gigabyte of storage per month. Let's bump it to two. This is just a personal site. I'm just saving comments and small stuff like that. $3 per month for storage. For cash, I am going to be cost efficient here. I'm gonna use my database as my cash. Object storage, I don't need any here. 
and data transfer. Let's say I get a million requests, which is a lot for a personal site, I wish, and 10 gigabytes of transfer. And those are going to be good. Those are included with Sandbox plan. So $0 on usage. Let's say I go viral, I get 2 million and we bump up to like 20 gigabytes. You're looking at $2 of usage for transfer and edge requests. So that's looking at a personal site. You're looking at around $12.61 per month. Our app compute is great there because of the hibernation. But let's say we wanted this to be a little bit more of a not personal site. Maybe it serves more traffic. We can go up to Flex. And let's say we wanted the two gigabyte, two CPU. Let's bump that up. And we are now at $10.15 for our app compute. So our app cluster that's serving our traffic at 50% hibernation and our bill would be around $19.55, depending on your usage and traffic and how long your app truly hibernates. Overall, I think this pricing calculator is a great tool to get in there without logging in and just checking out what pricing Laravel Cloud will look like for an app that you build. All right, tool number two is live invoice previews. So here I am on my Laravel Cloud dashboard in my organization. You can see all of my apps here. I'm going to click usage and I'm going to click invoices over here. And this is going to be a live invoice of exactly what your billing will cost at this current time. Here I am status April 17th to May 16th. And if I scroll down here, you can see that my bill looks like it'll be about $163. And in my mind, I honestly didn't think my bill was going to be this much. I have all those apps, all of them are hibernating. One of them, two of them are production apps. But where is this bill coming from? So if I look at my app compute, I'm at $25 here. So that's expected. That's the servers I chose. That's the app compute size that I chose for those. And then if I go down here, my database is at $5 for compute. Serverless Postgres compute right here. So I think this one is my MySQL database. And that is a $7 database. So that makes sense. And this is a serverless Postgres. And the way I built it out was it was going to be about $60 for the month. So I think that actually tracks pretty well. But what I wasn't sure about when I first saw this was my bandwidth data transfer. So I'm getting $56 off the bandwidth data transfer there. And I wasn't exactly sure where that was coming from. So after digging in a little bit, one of my applications actually has a dashboard and I have a use poll on there. So basically it's refreshing every five seconds and doing a brand new request, getting all those database queries and then sending it back over the wire into my app. So now I'm thinking, okay, I need to bump that use poll up to 10 seconds instead of five or maybe 20, 30. I think my app doesn't need that much of real time, but really the solution there is to say, hey, maybe I should add in some kind of real time push pull, pub sub type thing, maybe reverb, who knows, but this is a good tool to check out what your bill looks like so that you can know exactly what's happening over the month as we go along. In addition to the invoice preview, we have this allowances tab right here. And this is your usage for the month. And this is what you're currently using. So this is that bandwidth data transfer that we were seeing in that other invoice preview where my bill was a little larger than expected. And I'm looking at 663 gigabytes of the 100 gigabytes included in the pro plan. But look at my edge requests. I'm only getting 2.6 million requests out of the 10 million. So there's like a discrepancy there because I'm getting 2.6 million edge requests. But look at this. I'm at 600 gigabytes of transfers. Again, this really helped me figure out, hey, don't use that used poll. Don't be so aggressive on polling. Switch over to something else. Tool number four, and this is something I've talked about in a previous video. If you go into the docs, you scroll down over here to plans and pricing. This is where you can really dial in what your price is. And we saw this in the pricing calculator. But if you want to dive in a little bit more, see exact numbers and calculate yourself, you can go here and here's plans, usage, computes. So this is probably what gets a lot of people. If we're on a certain region and we say, oh, I want a two flex, one gigabyte plan. So two CPU, one gigabyte, that's $12.85 a month. And if we turn on hibernation, it'll be less than that, right? I think a lot of people will look at their application and say, oh, I'm going to go four CPU, four gigabyte compute instance. And then you're up to a $40 per month plan immediately just off of that compute. So if that's what you want, all good. If you want to go something lower, 
and then trust that the auto scaling feature of Laravel Cloud can get you to the higher instances when it's needed only. So for example, if I'm on two CPU, two gigabyte, $20, and I start to hit the upper limit of what my traffic is doing to my app cluster, then Laravel Cloud will say, oh, let me go to two replicas and then it'll do two replicas at two CPU, two gigabyte and handle all that traffic. So then for that tiny amount of time, I'm looking at $20 doubled up because I'm at two replicas. So that's $40. But then when the traffic goes away, it scales back down and I'm back at that $20 base. So another tool there is use this pricing docs page and you can see bandwidth prices here. You can see database prices, MySQL. 547 for the one CPU 512. This is what the pricing calculator is derived from. So feel free to check this out. Very helpful when you want to calculate all your costs. And I'm going back to my dashboard and number five, and I know this is not released yet, so you can't really call it number five, but number five is alerts. And these are coming soon. This is to say you can set thresholds and say, if I exceed X amount of dollars, in a given month, alert me. So now you can say, I will be sure that once I hit certain limits, then I can adjust my usage, maybe get me through the rest of the month, but that's coming soon. So stay tuned for that. All right, those are some tools that we have for Laravel Cloud to help you estimate your pricing. And I hope that these tools, it can get you to a place where you are more confident about what you'll be spending on Laravel Cloud for all your different types of apps all of these tools, the pricing calculator, the invoice previews, the usage in dashboard, and then the other video that we have for the tips on how to save money on cloud, which tells you to hibernate, share resources, trust auto scaling, all of those things put together. I hope it helps you understand how to work with a platform like Laravel Cloud that is usage-based, but doesn't have to be as unknown as you might think. You can have all the tools and all the knowledge to pretty closely estimate what your bill will be. Thanks. See you next time.